For this question, we're given the function f of x is equal to 2x to the third power plus 3x squared minus 36x. First, we'd like to find out the intervals on which f is increasing or decreasing. And to do that, we need our first derivative. So let's go ahead and do our first derivative, f prime of x. The derivative of 2x to the third power will be 6x squared, and the derivative of 3x squared is going to be plus 6x, and the derivative of minus 36x is just minus 36. And then this is a quadratic. We'll try to factor this as much as we can. We first see that we have 6, 6, and negative 36. So we can factor our 6. And then we will have x squared plus x minus 6, right? Because we factor our 6 already. And then we can factor this out again. So we have 6 right here. And then we have two parentheses. We need x and x. And we need two numbers multiplied to the negative 6. And together they add up to plus 1. So we need plus 3 and minus 2. So this is all we need. And as usual, what we do is we set this equal to 0 so we can find the critical numbers. So that means we just care about this. x plus 3 is equal to 0. x is equal to negative 3. Likewise, x minus 2 is equal to 0. x is equal to positive 2. These are the critical numbers. All right. And what we do next is we are going to draw a number line. And I'm going to locate, let's say, negative 3 is right here and positive 2 is right here. These are the x values. And then we are going to plug in into the first derivative, this form. So this is the first derivative test. f prime of x is equal to 6 times x plus 3 times x minus 2. Okay? And then we know that when x is equal to negative 3 and positive 2, the first derivative will be 0. So we know that we'll just put on this open circle because at 0, when the first derivative is 0, the function is not increasing, it's not decreasing. We just care about where the first derivative is positive or negative. Right, so this is what we do. We pick a number that's less than negative 3. So we can say negative 4, for example. And then we plug in negative 4 into our first derivative. We want to see if it's positive result or negative result. So we see that we have 6 in the front. So that's positive 6, right? Let me just write down the positive 6. And then if we plug in negative 4 into the second factor, which is the x plus 3, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So we have negative from this parentheses. And then we plug in negative 4 into the third parentheses, the second parentheses actually. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So that's negative. And then we multiply this result. Positive times negative times negative. Altogether, that will be positive. So we know that during this interval from negative infinity to negative 3, we will have positive first derivative. And then we are going to repeat the same process for this and that interval. So for this interval, we pick a number in between of negative 3 and 2, that says 0, and plug into here and here. The 6 is always positive. Plug in 0 into here, 0 plus 3 is positive. Plug in 0 into here, 0 minus 2 is negative. So altogether, positive times positive times negative, this will be negative first derivative. And the last part, we pick a number that's bigger than 2. So let's say 5, just for the fun. <laughs> you can pick 3 if you would like. Anyways, plug in 5 into here. Well, the 6 is always positive. And 5 into here, right? So 5 plus 3 is positive 8 times the last one, 5 times. I mean 5 into here, 5 minus 2 is positive 3. So altogether, this will give us a positive result. Right, so we can answer our first question. On um, what intervals will f be increasing and decreasing? So let's say right here, uh, this is part a. f is increasing when the first derivative is positive. So from negative infinity up to negative 3. So we have the first one, negative infinity up to negative 3 or from 2 to infinity, because during this interval, the first derivative is also positive as well. So we have 2 to infinity. And once again, we do not include the n values right here, because when x is negative 3 or when x is 2, the first derivative is 0, so it's not increasing, it's not decreasing. Okay. And decreasing means that we have the negative first derivative that goes from negative 3 to 2. So we have negative 3 to 2. Or decreasing. So we are done for the first part. Part B, we are going to see 
where are the local maximum and minimum of the uh, original fun function, right? So let's do the local maximum first. Well, from this chart, the number line right here, how do we know if f, if the original f has a um, local maximum or not? Well, once again, let's go back to our first derivative right here. The first derivative was positive right here, and then it becomes to, you know, it became negative. That means it looks like this, going up and go down. So we know that when x is negative 3, we will have a local maximum. Okay, so let me just indicate that we have a local maximum because once again, um, the first derivative is positive, so that means the original is going up and then up to here it stops and then negative first derivative means that it goes down, so we must have a local maximum. Okay, so let me just write it down. We are going to have a local maximum when x is equal to negative 3, but then we have to plug in into the original. We have to plug in the negative 3 into the original because we want to find out the local maximum value of f, the original. So f of negative 3, I have to plug in negative 3 into this x right here. We will have 2 times negative 3 to a third power plus 3 times negative 3 squared and then minus 36 times negative 3. And all this, if you can just do it on your calculator, we will get positive 81. So that will be the local maximum value for f. Likewise for minimum, local minimum, let me do it in a different color. Let's say green right here. Well, when x is equal to 2, you see that the first derivative changes from negative to positive. That means the graph was going to go down and then go up. So therefore, we have a local minimum when x is equal to 2. So I will just you know, do the same thing for you guys. Local minimum, we will have to get f of 2. We will plug in 2 into the original. So we have 2 times 2 to the third power plus 3 times 2 to the second power and then minus 36 times 2. And then altogether, we will end up with negative 44. This will be the local minimum value for f. So we are done for part b. Lastly, let's see what we have. We are trying to get the concavities, meaning that where is the original concave up or concave down. And to do that, we need to get a second derivative. And to do the second derivative, we have to look at the first derivative right here. Right, so I'll just use this and we'll point it right here. I need to get a second derivative. So we have to differentiate this again. This is easier to differentiate compared to this one, right? Anyways, the derivative of 6x squared, it will be 12x, and the derivative of plus 6x is just plus 6. And then the derivative of negative 36 is 0, so this is it. And then we have to find out the 0 again. So we set this equal to 0, and we can just see that real quick. x will be, well, 12x is going to be negative 6, x will be negative 1 half, right? So we'll do a number line as well. And in this case, we care about the number when x is equal to negative 1 half. But then not exactly there, so let me put open circle. And as usual, we plug in into the second derivative expression because we have to do the second derivative test to see that where is the second derivative positive and where is the second derivative negative. So pick a number that's less than negative 1 half, let's say negative 1. Plug in negative 1 into the second derivative. We will get negative 12 plus 6, that's negative. And once again, this right here, we are dealing with the second derivative, okay? This number line right here. Right, and then we pick a number that's bigger than negative 1 half, let's say 0, was 1 or 5, doesn't matter, let's just say 0. Plug in 0 into the second derivative expression, we have 12 times 0 plus 6, that will be positive 6, that will be positive. Right, we can answer our question. Let me just do this in red. So we know that f is concave up. So CU stands for concave up. f is concave up when we have positive second derivative. So that means we have to go from negative 1 half to infinity. Okay. 
So the original function is concave up when the second derivative is positive, which is right here, from negative 1 half to positive infinity. And likewise, we can say f is concave down. So let me just put it down as f is cd concave down when we have negative second derivative, which is right here, from negative infinity to negative 1 half. Okay, so these are the concavities, and we are done with that part. And by the way, the green section was the minimum earlier. I should have labeled that, underlined that earlier. And we have one more little thing to deal with. We need to get a point of inflection. Well, POI, point of inflection is where the second derivative change sign. So as we can see, the second derivative changes from negative to positive, so we have a point of inflection or inflection point at x is equal to negative one half. And if I want to find the point, what we do is POI, I have to plug in negative one half into the original because I want to know where that point is, the coordinate of the point. So plug in negative one half into all this x we will have 2 times negative 1 half to the third power plus 3 times negative 1 half to the second power and then minus 36 times negative 1 half. And all this computation will give you, uh, I use a decimal here, so we have uh, 18.5. Okay, so the point of inflection, which is the point we know, it's going to be negative 1 half comma, um, 18.5. Well, up to you if you want to use fraction or decimal, up to you. Anyways, that's it.